I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show, and I'm continuing my very happy conversation with a candidate for the Republican nomination for the presidency in 2012, Thaddeus McCotter of Michigan. We spoke of domestic issues, and now we turn to foreign, but China is at the center of both domestic and foreign. Uh, Congressman, this evening we have news that in the uh, aftermath of the high-speed train wreck in China, uh, many dead, the Chinese authorities have fired three leading engineers, men in charge of the Shanghai to Beijing Railway, and have started to bury the cars that fell off the overpass. Bury them in the ground. I can't explain it other than the fact that it points out to me that we're not dealing with a transparent democracy here. We're dealing with an authoritarian gang. And that gang, these many years, has been treated by the Clinton administration, the Bush administration, the Obama administration as our trading partner, as our trading rival. You have often mentioned that this is the communist Chinese government. What does that mean to you? Well, it's what they call themselves, John, and fundamentally what you see is they have an antithetical belief to the United States. No matter how they garb it, they believe that an individual's liberty is a threat to the state's security and professed prosperity. What the United States believes is our liberty undergirds our security and our prosperity. Those are two antithetical models. The Chinese communists understand this, and when you start to look at some of the internal discussions that they're having and some of the not-so-internal statements that they make, they realize uh, that the United States is their rival. Now, a lot of people have ceded the 21st century to the communist regime. I disagree, not only based upon what you cite, but what the United States, I think, should remember about this country, other than the fact that it is the same one that killed my generation in Tiananmen Square and was rewarded for it by the world community through trade, is ask yourself a question. If this is the world's largest economic market and we have permanent normalization of trade relations so that we can engage with them, why do we have a $200 billion annual trade deficit with them if we are engaged in free and fair trade with that country? As president, how would you address the inequities that have built up over these last 20 years of China building an entirely export-driven economy? They're mercantilists. What you have to do is first enforce your trade rights and bank. You have to go after the whole thing. You can't just try to pick them one, one at a time. Secondly, I think that you have to demand reciprocity of access to investment within their country. If we do not do that, then you're going to have to, I would argue, make sure that you attach trade as a criteria, or human rights as a criteria of trade with that country. You have to make sure that as well that you prevent any type of foreign investment in the United States, as we've seen with Huawei and others that have been shot down by the CFIUS, that are put there not for necessarily solely business purposes, but for also strategic advantage against the United States. These are four areas that we have to continue to watch them. And if the United States just continues unconditional engagement with this regime, we're going to continue to see not only our security jeopardized, but obviously our prosperity as well. We're told that an official of the Foreign Ministry of North Korea is traveling to New York or to Washington soon to start exploratory talks with the State Department. I mention this because we know that China sustains entirely the North Korean predators. At the same time, it allows me to link to another story, which is the death of an Iranian nuclear scientist in his home over these last 48 hours, suspect of having been targeted because he's part of that illicit nuclear weapons program, entirely, of course, bought and paid for in North Korea. This is the chain of predators that consist from Beijing to Pyongyang to, Iran, to Tehran. We could continue. As president, how do you respond to this? Do you talk? Do you begin denuclearization talks? Because that's the Obama administration's plans these next days. Well, I think obviously you can also track this all the way down to Chavez in, in Venezuela, and you can go back up to the Castro brothers in Cuba, and you can follow it around. It becomes a web. So the problem that we have, John, is that the United States has not made it clear to communist China that their dealings with North Korea, that their dealings with the Iranians, or to the Russians either, for that matter, are going to impact their bilateral relations with the United States. We continue to act as if their engagement with these types of rogue regimes, and I would include the Chinese communists as one of them, is somehow immaterial to how we deal with them directly. That is not the case. When they are facilitating a country like North Korea, as nuclear development, which is facilitating the Iranians' nuclear development. This is not merely a problem between us and the Iranians and us and the North Koreans. It is a problem between us and the communist Chinese that are abetting it. Final, finally, Congressman, uh, as a presidential candidate, you've spoken very, very passionately about foreign affairs. I am disappointed to the extent, uh, shocked, that your uh, competitors in the presidential nomination process do not speak of foreign affairs. What's happened? What's happened to the Republican Party that it's not an issue at the, at the debate in Manchester uh, several weeks ago? 
I don't know. That's why I helped to make up my mind end of the race, John. Look, we're a country in stagnation economically, and we are a country at war with men and women wearing our uniform, defending our liberty, and expanding it to others to help advance freedom throughout the world. When we look at it, the Republican Party is the party of Lincoln and Reagan, a party born in the crucible of both civil war and a cold war that transcended its times to victory. As a Republican Party, foreign affairs are something that we should be able to articulate not only to the America but to the world. And unfortunately, if you miss the opportunity to do that, you will cede the ground to President Obama, and we've seen how that has worked out to date. I'm delighted to see that Thaddeus McCotter, candidate for the presidency, will be in the debate in Iowa in August with his uh, other the other candidates for the Iowa straw poll. And I hope at that time uh, we, do, uh, we do see you all get to speak of foreign affairs. It's a pressing issue always, but as you saw tonight, China manufacturing the United States, they're all integral to our economy. Absolutely. In a globalized economy and world, John, with our economy and our prosperity and our security, they're all interlinked. Congressman Thaddeus McCotter of 11th Michigan, candidate for the Republican nomination for the presidency. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.